like um I don't want to touch my VR headset. <laughs> mm. I'm like it's so annoying to have to like go back and forth, back and forth. And then like so I love having the computer and like we were building the PC build, uh or the desktop build. And um Hi everyone. So today again we are no, having have another panel already, discussion. Like, so we are shortly yeah, about to start it like, and I'm going around, live. Like, so keep watching the live streaming and different social media and I hope you guys will enjoy the session. Meanwhile, yeah, I'll also give you a tour of the well galleries. There we go. So she, if she signs up, um, let me know when she gets all signed up, because I'll email them to tell, like, give them a heads up and let her know, let them know, and I can like, when they, when I, when Brendan signed up, I just asked him to like move ahead with him before everybody else. So, so uh, I, I get a little priority, pull some strings in there. I love that. Um, watching videos of like 12 year olds and like Indian guys saying like you got to write your code and do this and Justin, he's the CTO of Arcade. Um, they're going to be joining you on the panel. Watch that joystick. If you don't want to move, you don't want to touch that joystick. Well, I have some work here on display in my gallery. Uh, I've been using Cinema 4 d Blender. Yeah. Uh, come teleport closer to me. I'll give you another um, couple of pointers there. So with the with the joystick, if you press and hold it forward, um, and 
and uh, they don't let go of it yet. You can control exactly where that ball is on the floor. Uh, oh, I see. Like, yeah. Um, so if you do want to move like somewhere very specific, um, then press and hold it, point your hand until it's exactly where you want to be, and then let go of the joystick, and you'll get brought right there. Historically, yeah, I think it just doesn't sound good. It's like reappearing and appearing. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I only got it when I pressed forward. Probably a bit of a strange It's okay. I'm just saying. And, uh, yeah, it has to be burned a bit. Was at the show and it was like so yeah. busy. Yeah. I'm good. Like, there's another, there's the another way of moving around. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that's a bit more intuitive. And, uh, you find that for people, people that have been in VR before, you need to be more comfortable. You're used to the default. Everyone into the teleport just away. And then once you're a bit more familiar with VR, then you can switch up to move like how I am. The most swift. <laughs> I've been in here uh, for a few minutes at least, so I kind of figured out pretty good. <laughs> so the way the panel is going to work there, Dan, is um, Justin, um, Joel, and yourself. Uh, you're going to just line up on one of the walls, um, and then we're going to bring the, the crowd around to kind of um, just congregate on, like, opposite um, the three of you. And then the panel discussion will take place. It will last for, you know, probably about 40 minutes or so. And um, and then um, after it concludes, then everyone can just split and go their own ways or hang out if they want to. Sounds good. So, all right. <laughs> So, yeah. I'll uh, intro you to yeah. Justin and Joel. I've known VR him like, through, like, the internet. Like, we've uh, literally been yeah, on the same forum growing up and tools, stuff. Right, so, um, all right, so yeah, uh, I've had a really like, just partner, just this relationship with him, yeah. I'd like to intro you to Dan. Uh, yeah. Justin. Um, I mean, hey. Justin, Justin. I go by DBN. Dan. Not I couldn't find that in the menu. Nah, no, it's not database, but uh, good enough. Hey, <laughs> then. Oh, oh, there you are. Uh, okay. Hang for a little bit. <laughs> a friend of mine is uh, one of my uh, partners in another <laughs> business. Does handles sales. Uh, I can't find that. Hey, I'm sorry. Are you in here now? Sorry. Yeah. I just looked over in the lobby and I was trying to find the. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. I'm oh, happy to hear somebody computer. say you click like five or six times, so that's all I did. Yeah, but I had to actually like throw the bottom of my hand. Yeah, but I had to actually like throw the bottom of my hand. Yeah, but I had to actually like throw the bottom of my hand. Yeah, but I had to actually like throw the bottom of my hand. Yeah, but I had to actually like throw the bottom of my hand. Yeah, but I had to we got to do more of that. I want to show you how to do the original image that I made. Have you got this? Um, I got an interesting conversation. Yeah. 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 I just have them online. Sorry. I think there's a delay when we're talking. Because I feel like we're talking over top of the United States. For the games. No, I think it's just there's a delay. All of our back end stuff is just being. So I don't want to talk over top of my words. I think there's something on the other Do you want to follow me for a second? We do that on the other end. We just got to find the way to get back here before then local. We spend most time of on building the with experience. We spend most time on the back end data API for the other side. It depends. It's pretty even. The back end side, we have like a full CMS where like the galleries can upload their artwork and they can. Organize things, and then <laughs> on the front end side, I would call the VR side the front end side. Um, yeah, that's where you get the whole display of everything. Um, yeah, like no matter how much, lately it's been all, all of the front end, uh, the VR stuff. So we spent a lot of time on the front end. I had my glasses off, I was, I was trying to get a drink and stuff. Yeah, it's just, uh, uh, I, I come back. Yeah, I know. Oh, over the place. <laughs> Your neck looks like mean, a marker, yeah? Yeah, no, it's just <laughs> what happens when, uh, whenever you take your glasses, you take your glasses off, it yeah. looks funny, so. It's like, it's like the the right yeah, we were hanging out with you, and all of a sudden you were on the floor, and we're like, oh my god, <laughs> call the VR police. <laughs> oh, I thought I, I took mine up a little higher. I thought it was no, they were on the ground, we're like, 
Outside of Washington, D.C., the three of you. Um, but I, I live so in Toronto, where you've been a kid um, for a couple years. So, uh, uh, so I figured I'd bring up got to get back up there one of these days if we can uh, open up these borders. Hey, Justin. Hey, Eddie, Jay. Eventually, um, yeah. Yeah. Excited yeah. to hear what you guys are gonna hey. uh, nerd talk here. Hey. <laughs> I so you be here. The, uh, hey. you to be CTO hey, right? for, like, a yeah. that's coming that's okay. oh. oh yeah, high yeah. five. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know, yeah. 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 I'm sorry I missed your You have a lot of stories on that. Uh, I mean, and and Max and I would love to just be Max <laughs> guy. We're just kind of having fun walking around. Yeah. I was saying that so I have uh, all my stories together at some point. And oh, you know, really? it would almost be like a, a happy yeah. hour. We could just walk around each other's galleries. Yeah. I mean, because we were in uh, the next gallery, just cracking like, each other up. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, just really, some, at some point, kind of things, like, getting uh, a really done, cool uh, kind of like public perspective of what you thought about. You know, I mean, I probably got inspired from what you did here. Company does the same. You can do that. Brennan, uh, some notes yeah, on but kind of what it's we very like interesting. Like, I bet you guys have a blast because, like, this is the all the technical uh, stuff yeah, that you have to do, Justin. It's probably like multiple. So, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's kind of like a. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Everybody, we can uh, we can start getting the group organized. If you can all follow me over here, please. DB, uh, if you want to stay there, Joel. Uh, yeah, that's like a like pretty well perfect spacing. And then right. uh, Tiffany, if you want to work your way over over here, there. All right, um, Joel. Actually, do you do you mind uh, popping on the other side of Justin here? Um, just right about here. And then if you can all, uh, yeah, that's that's like perfect right there. Yeah, that's great. Cool. And then um, hey, everyone. everyone else, if you can all, if you can all crowd in a little bit closer, um, just remember the closer you are to the panelists, the louder their audio will be. So get in nice and close. So you don't have to worry right about. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about social distancing or anything. So I'll just do that. <laughs> yes. Whisper. And then uh, I'll try not to one get more in your reminder to more, everybody okay. too. Um, we, we don't have mute or anything like that, so if you are going to be talking or if there's noise going on in the background, if you can just move off to the other side of the room while you need to do something, um, that'd be really appreciated. Uh, but otherwise, come on in, and we can uh, let this whole thing begin. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for coming out. A uh, lot more people than I thought there would be, which is awesome. Um, I kind of wanted to... So every year, Oculus does this event called OC6. Um, I think that's where Joel and I met, uh, Joel, Brendan, and I met uh, at OC6. And they do one every year. There's OC7, whatever. And um, the CTO of Oculus, um, I'm brain farting on his name right now. <laughs> John Carmack. John Carmack. John Carmack, legend. <laughs> um, he like made games like Doom, um, Tons of, tons of amazing video games, and he's sort of the god of the VR world in Oculus's <laughs> eyes. Um, he does this awesome talk, tech talk, with brings on some like very forward-thinking leaders in technology, and uh, has a talk about just the nerdiest things you can think of. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just really inspiring. And I thought it'd be awesome to have our own little fireside chat. And uh, yeah, so I brought uh, DB here. He's the former CTO of um, Artsy and now <laughs> principal engineer at Amazon. Yeah. And then Joel, I can't how, remember. How they, they, can, they can intro themselves. Yes, yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm taking over too Justin, much. you introduce yourself, and then DB can yeah. intro, Joel can intro. And then there you can go. Justin O'Hare, CTO of ArtGate. Um, one of the crazy bastards who came up with this machine that we're all in. Um, <laughs> and yeah. And DB? Cool. I, I go by DB. Uh, I live in New York. I'm uh, a principal engineer at AWS. Yes. I, I work on OpenSearch, which is uh, a new uh, fork of Elasticsearch, an open source project that we'll continue uh, sponsoring and working on. And uh, I was CEO of Artsy for about eight years, so I helped build that platform. Um, Joel, you. Yeah, hey everyone, Joel Sadler here. I guess I'm an educational XR uh, technologist, so I've uh, 
been working on a, a new startup trying to bring uh, remote learning into into VR, working with uh, some cool partners like Stanford University. I've been seeing a lot of events like this, but in a learning context. And formerly, I was CTO of a learning company called Piper Learning, where we're sort of building, uh, you know, teaching STEM by actually building a computer uh, for kids. And so I was super excited about all things VR and creativity because I, you know, I think this is sort of the future of how people will learn and create. And so really uh, excited to uh, support these guys and, you know, uh, tools like Artgate are kind of leading the way, you know, and showing democratizing access to, to you know, a key piece of human creativity. Awesome. So yeah, we had a we had a little chat before, um, and we had a few topics we kind of wanted to go over. I think one of the biggest ones that kind of ties into the art world right now is NFTs. Um, and I mean, we're in the Beeple room. Mister sold the most NFT, most expensive NFTs I think so far. Um, and NFTs is kind of him being a digital artist has sort of allowed him to become. Uh, even bigger and be more respected within the in the fine art world. Um, I guess we'll start with DB. Do you have any thoughts on NFTs? What are your you own any? What's your uh, take on them? I'm so not surprised that you started by asking me about NFTs, uh, the hot topic of today. It suddenly gets really exciting, and everyone is making them, and they've been selling for a lot of money, which is a little bit absurd in my opinion, but the art world has always been absurd. I think if you asked me two years ago, I would say, yeah, it's, it's going to be niche for a very long time. And uh, I gave, in 2018, I gave a talk at the Christie's conference about the future of art on the blockchain, and uh, I, st I thought this is the one where they gave a bunch of lost, now lost Robbies as a gift. Uh, and I happen to have one, uh, and uh, I was I was talking about all this NFT future and current NFT stuff, the punks and everything else, and I uh, was thinking, yeah, I don't know, I'm just gonna continue observing this from the sidelines, and then it hit like a truck in the last couple of months. So I'm I'm doing a, a 180. I think it's uh, actually quite cool, and uh, have started looking for a niche which will be the main thing in a couple of years. And I think I. I think it's at uh, uh, Hickenang, so I've been minting some of my own art there. I oh, put nice. some stuff on the.
I'm sorry guys, I just got a technical problem, so I need to rejoin it again. So bear with me for a while. Hi, oh. Chanel. You're back? Yeah, I just got disconnected. I need to rejoin it again. You started with the live stream or yeah. you start again? I started and then all of a sudden I just, I don't know what happened. The room went empty and I lost inside the gallery. Now, as usual, I'm again getting a problem to find the gallery. Yeah, wow. Search for Beeple's 2019. It says Beeple's Every Days 2019. Yeah, I got it. developing world and you know my That's sweet my my bend was always like can you take something super super expensive make it accessible to lots of people you know i created something called a diaper knee that was about twenty dollars down from five thousand uh, dollars using the skills you know tricks that we learned in engineering school um and so i think what what's sort of interesting with the nft direction is you know how how can we maybe not focus so much on how many millions of dollars people are making and more about how can we think a little smaller and you know if i create something i spent all day yesterday fishing in vr i was a little embarrassed to fish it's a great app called real <laughs> vr fishing okay my, my quest battery died right so i played this thing until my battery went all the way down and i was catching these virtual fish for about, about two hours that was real work. It was like, I'm sitting there, I'm like reeling in these virtual, it, there's no physical, you know, in some ways the value is sort of hard to see. Um, but I was learning something. I was learning about, I've never fished, you know, <coughs> very strange concept. <laughs> um, but I was, I was so getting boring. exchanged and I was catching, I caught a Mako shark, a huge thing. It was a beautiful, emotionally positive experience. And, you know, it was, I paid money for this app and I feel like the exchange was really fair. Um, so I think there's something moving forward in the future, whether it's the future of work or how we learn or how we create, where we do need ways to have anyone anywhere sell what they've created. Um, and so that, that I think we're seeing the, the beginning stages of with the NFT craze. It's probably just a little bit on the extreme side. And what I'm looking forward in the future is regular people making regular things. Um, uh, like in my world, you know, we're working with anatomy students that are learning anatomy in VR with Stanford Medical School. Who's gonna make those, the, the virtual hearts? Brendan has a nice piece in here. It, it, I think his heart. Brendan, was that scanned from your-, your uh, actual... it, was an, it was an art collector's heart that donated to advanced cardiac research. It was a, a scan of their heart. Awesome. So it's someone's cool. real heart. It's, it's golden. Wow. See if you walk around, you maybe can point to people to it afterwards. Someone had to make that asset. I guess you made it, Brendan. <laughs> um, like the MRI machine made it, I guess. And then yeah, I Brendan repurposed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you, yeah. It, you did some work to bring that into this experience so we could all sort of see that golden heart. And that was of mm -hmm. some value. And it's totally unique mm -hmm. that some dude's heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think you should be rewarded for it. Uh, and so that's sort of what I'm excited about is um, multiply that by 10,000 and then maybe we can build up the, uh, 
you know, the, the economy of the virtual assets that are helping people on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Even with like crypto, I mean, there's, uh, I can't remember which app it is, but if you just shake your phone or they have ones where it's like you have a raw Wi-Fi router and you're like being part of this full network. I think it's Helium is the one where you have the router and you're generating, you're basically mining the Helium coin and you're giving something out to society and you're getting something back. And it's like encouraging people to just give out more. Um, I think it's, there's definitely a great opportunity, especially with that idea in mind, Joel, um, mm -hmm. to definitely build a better society. Um, with that in mind, there's the negative aspects of crypto. Dan, what do you think about um, the power usage of the hardware? I'm sure Joel has a lot of good ideas around this. He's a hardware guy. But uh, I'm curious what you have, DB. Uh, yeah, it's it's very unfortunate that uh, all the stuff is consuming so much electricity, and uh, it's uh, I don't think that many people care enough about it. And so clearly, the prices that current uh, Ethereum network NFTs are fetching are a testament of that. Uh, it now becomes an economic problem rather than an actual environmental one. So I, I, the art world never cares about anything, to be honest. I think it's uh, it's one which is exists on the edges and is extreme in so many ways, and the amounts of money are uh, just not humanly comprehensible. We're just seeing history repeat itself in many ways. Um, but uh, I'm excited for uh, for the future in which this problem is solved. We keep saying, oh, you know, the the network will solve this problem, and the network will solve the problem. There's already uh, there's already art communities where this is not a problem. Like Tezos, I think is the place where uh, where this is this is not an issue at this point. So uh, minus the big the iffy beginnings of that currency with lawsuits and uh, pyramid schemes and that and what God knows what, uh, I think that. What we have today on the Tezos network is uh, environmentally uh, sound and uh, is uh, is totally happening. So yeah. it's an issue. We should all like leave the Ethereum world and go somewhere else where the artists are trying to experiment today. Yeah. So I think the yes. NFT craze of, of today is the conclusion of something. It's not the beginning of something uh, in its current form. It, it's beginning to be in a new form elsewhere on a different network. And that's that's very exciting because something that something that we don't like today we don't have to take it as is and we can go and build it elsewhere. There's very serious teams working on blockchains that don't consume that much power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even How helium much power is it really like comparatively to like printing a dollar or something. Well, if you think yeah, well. <laughs> It, it doesn't. I don't think. I don't like, think it's it, fair. It really like, we're not actually know, replacing like, the U.S. dollar with digital currency yet. So uh, well, I, mean, I don't think like it's, how, it's like the energy wise to like you know like something from transporting the dollar to gas to what are they doing? Yeah. They're just running like a bunch of servers and electricity. Bunch I mean, I, I work for AWS, so well. we love servers. Yeah. but uh, yeah, he knows I, servers I think very that, well. <laughs> I, I think that uh, uh, I, I just there's some futility in it in some ways. It's it's energy that you'd like. We don't have to waste it. I guess is the is the key. Right. And uh, yeah, like I my me running leaving my water running endlessly all day or my lights on. This like I was I was in DC visiting a friend last weekend and um, they just leave the lights on all the time in the apartment. Like why do you do that? Oh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not mm -hmm. a, it's not very wasteful compared to the power plant that's eating you no know, power mm -hmm. like no tomorrow next door uh, or some right. huge building. But it's still wasteful, and I just don't think we have to. And, They'd be more uh, conscious of it if they actually had to go collect it from like the sun or solar, and actually have a set amount for that day, and, exactly. and chop. You know, what I'm I mean? not, so yeah. It's, it's, yeah I'm not too concerned, good. but I think we we should be um, uh, we should be conscious that alternatives exist, and go spend more time where there are alternatives, and just fix these problems a little bit faster. These these are real problems worth investing maybe uh, digital or real money sorry real and digital are not really uh, opposite so uh, digital and uh, paper money mm -hmm. so yeah I, i'm confident this, these things are getting solved one by one 
Yeah, they are. They, okay. they just discovered um, unlimited renewable energy with the neutrinos, like the cosmic radiation. They figured out how to convert that into electricity. So hopefully this issue gets solved. And as for like the earlier question, the electricity consumption rivals that of small countries. So it's like, it is a pretty huge issue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just I, for I love, when I was a kid, though. I love yeah, the, uh, the book by Alexander Belayev, uh, Eternal Bread. And uh, it's this idea that everyone can have uh, a bread at home that just grows indefinitely and doesn't require any energy to grow. And so everybody now has infinite bread. So I, I'd love to see that with electricity one day, but uh, I think I think it remains in sci-fi sci stories uh, of my childhood. We still you know don't have really flying cars or eternal bread. Have, have you seen those? Um, the they're like consumption of the entire they're, uh, these new um, floor tiles that they're coming out with, where the stepping on them generates energy. And so as you walk throughout your house, like it shrinks, just compresses a little bit and generates some energy. And oh, so wow. as you walk through your house or on the sidewalk, it's constantly generating energy. And so if you wow. think about like how many people are walking, how many steps they're taking a day, um, I mean, it's getting less and less now, but um, I think or the opportunity to just roads, walk. Like cars actually driving on roads anytime they pass, exactly. that, it shrinks down. I've seen something like that. They had a Black Mirror episode where they went in for work and rode a bicycle. Yeah, and I watched that yesterday, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Remember, yeah, physics has not been canceled, so the yeah. energy it takes to propel that car is still probably higher than the energy we're going to recover from the propelling of that mm -hmm. car. So uh, well, it's, it's good if we can get close. And probably even, yeah, right? <laughs> That's good. But nothing's being recovered at the control. moment, so... Yeah, it so would be a, a huge benefit. So what is that material again? Um, I, I'm not too sure. I don't have an answer to that. But um, it's basically like they'll have like a board on top. And then underneath, there's like these little springs. And then they have like friction built into it. And the way it compresses, it uh, generates a little bit of energy as you compress each one of the tiles that you step on. Um, we'll it, it's it not up at like some piezo electric roads. My my there kids are go. bouncing all the time. We can get, put them to work too. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> little power plants right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Right. With their, like, Let's solar make the pedal. It's gonna be really good too. <laughs> I feel with the uh, NFT him him making it like uh you know like what's to come because someone can spend like all day on pieces like that and have ideas and stuff, but. If they're spending all day on the computer at home designing something, something they came up with, and then they put it out there, and now it's sort of just like open source, or just someone takes takes it without them actually having like their name attached to that design or idea, it's sort of people just don't even want to try. You know what I mean? So once you're able to actually put your name and, and link it to yourself and come up with these ideas and actually start designing them and creating them, there's going to be a lot more people willing and interested in, in actually starting to think about it you know yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a good yeah. opportunity yeah. Oh, this is not new in the art world i mean digital art has oh. been around for a long time the ability to attach a name to things is not new uh it's uh but there is now a market it's really easy to click and collect that that's cool that and there's real money attached to it and then it had the perfect storm and the combination of lo lots of people have come to be able to click and collect and they, they all made uh, a lot of money on the growth of... Well, it, it's, you can, t today, if you want to buy a piece of art from a gallery, an auction house, a art sale, or another platform, it, it's a process. Uh, it's, it, maybe it's, uh, it's add to card checkout, but the work will get shipped to you. It's something you'll live with for a long time. Here, you can buy it and have it instantly. And uh, that's, uh, it, it, it's like... Um, we used to have that for digital art before, screensavers and the like, but it just wasn't as popular. And with the digital pieces of art that I created today and sold as NFTs, that just became popular really fast. So we have a market where people are able to add those things into their collections and resell them. And it's kind of a perfect storm of suddenly lots and lots of people who made a lot of money on Ethereum and Bitcoin because of its growth in price. Mm -hmm. And then they started buying and they started selling. And now they, they are, they, if you look at the prices of these things, they're way higher than traditional art world prices. So 
it's, it's it's just a new market and it got exciting and I, i've talked to many collectors recently uh who are new to the art world completely and i said ah you know i have like 500 ethers sitting there from because i bought it five years ago and uh, i decided to buy some nfts and it was fun and then i bought some and then i sold some and then now i'm like spending my entire day doing it and they're they're a whale in There's a, a hidden problem in what you're talking about. You know, we, we want this world where if you put in time and energy and you create something, it's like a fucking you know, if you're talking about basically if I, if I put six hours or maybe two years of my life into creating something, it's just gonna feel good for me as a creator if I put it out there and I don't get bored. Especially if it's like something world changing. doesn't seem like you know like all it's that big of a deal but even it gets somebody to start like thinking about something is half the battle like we could nft ideas so instead of like patenting mm. you patent an idea or like a concept um or like and an get object, teams like, of w people working on it that's cool yeah um and then like a blockchain for ideas and just concept. like Oh like yeah, I'm I'm totally ideas. bullish on the on on blockchain being a mechanism for things like that. I think it's it it's a great idea because it keeps track of things in a decentralized yes. way. Now we can totally mm -hmm. keep track in centralized way, but we know why we don't like it. So yeah, so it, it's com it completely works for for the right. art world. There's nothing new about uh, the this provenance history uh, right. and. Uh, it, it's these problems and the, and the fact that I may an artist has made something and others are profiting off the works of that artist later. Uh, that's also not new. Uh, yeah, and there's a new problem here that is digital art, which, you know, if you make a JPEG or a 3D model and you put it on the web, because you want to share it. Now your, your artwork is downloadable, anyone in the world, you don't have to pay as long as it's out there. It's much easier to sort of access. So there's an asymmetry in the energy that's used to create the thing and then how easy it is to like get your hands on it. Yeah. In the old days when art was all physical, let's say, you have to you have to physically go to the place where that art was. It had mass. It needed to be that size. So Wait, digital art so goes way back. We've been making digital art since the seventies, sixties. Right. We have net so, art is a huge movement. Videos yeah. have been but sold art, for art hundreds itself, of thousands like, millions of dollars. Been drawing on walls, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. So, so a new problem that has arise is, you know, in the seventies, no one was selling, you know, an image for millions of dollars. It's uh, not true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, there's, there's, well, what's the new there's problem? There's entire what's the new galleries problem? that have promoted digital artists like BitForms, uh, even mm -hmm. online galleries like Left Gallery has been selling digital art for for a generation now. We mm -hmm. we have yeah. we have artists, digital artists that are very well known. It hasn't it's it hasn't been as mainstream. I mean, if as you can even think of like a website today. or code as as art in itself, you know they've they've sold like code and like website ideas like. For a, a bunch of money, but I, I get where you're, you're going with it. But like, what's the yeah, new, the, the new the problem? Idea is ownership, right? Who owns the thing? Yes, someone could have transacted right. on mm -hmm. some digital art in the '70s, but it wouldn't be easy to enforce and say authoritatively, "Hey, I own that picture of that that was created." Unless you so have what, the floppy disk yourself, the like yeah. the what can artists do? Original floppy disk that it was created on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, paper paper certificates, sta rubber stamps, gallery, the, uh, the cards, equivalent. Right? Yeah. And by the way, there's the same thing with physical artwork. Just because it says like gallery's name in the back of the frame, like, it doesn't mean anything. There's like forgeries and everything in between. But the thing, it, it, the thing I think we're getting to is that it's actually really easy now. You can trace it. But look at copy minters. Like most of you, you're looking at NFTs all over the place. They can be copy minted. 
and pe most people don't click through the provenance of the thing to verify that it's actually the person. So we still have physical verification of who it is that actually minted the work yeah. with like blue check boxes on things like OpenSea or Arable others. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like we did in the real world, we, and we have tons of fakes circulating, people spending tons of money on them. So it's it's a little bit easier, and it's maybe more generalized. But we actually inherited a bunch of similar problems. What can artists do to uh, protect their images if they put them up? I don't think artists need to. Um, the, yeah. the artists who have been doing digital art for a while and who are doing NFTs now are. are a finding an audience that is, that is new. They're being curated. They're being brought to all the right places. They're making money off it in secondary market sales. Uh, I don't think they need to worry too much about protecting. They, all the artists need to be to be worried about making art and let other right. people make help them make money uh, of for their art. And that that's been how the art world works uh, so far. It's not perfect, yeah. but. Like art and money exist in kind of two different planes a little bit. I think it's not changed with NFTs. So I would worry about making art and not worry I mean, about digital people, production. His entire practice, he uploads his 3D files and anyone can go get them. Like he's always mm -hmm. just made his work free and uh, open. And it's, I mean, it's still sold for $69 million right. um, recently. So it's, I don't think the, va the value is in more the original the eye of the beholder and as long as you're that artist and i mean most most original transactions either the gallery or the artist has a direct relationship with the collector and so mm -hmm. that's that's good enough to tell like i mean i could go take any one of his artworks i mean we pretty much did i mean he gave it to us to make this ex exhibition but um okay. these aren't originals these aren't these are copies of the originals that were sold as nfts yeah. And, so uh, is the Mona Lisa. Yeah. You can go to the Louvre and see it, uh, or mm -hmm. you can see a print, or you could have a print, and it will be very high quality, and it will be indistinguishable to your eye, uh, the, the, the real thing from a, the non-real thing. Or if, if you watch uh, a bunch of documentaries about forgeries, like the uh, Rothkos and, uh, and Jackson Pollock's yeah, I just are... Watched that one the other day. The, the, what, what is it called? The, um, such a great documentary. Made you look. Who the fuck is Jackson Pollock? <laughs> Jack, so so uh, the the, uh, the Rothko fakes like look look identical, but they're worth everything if they're real, and they're worth nothing if they're not. And yet they look like a, a Rothko uh, out of the box, you know. Uh, to make naked eye, they just they just look real. So don't don't attach the dollar value to the to the paintings or digital yeah. works. These are these are separate things. Some, like, you could sell something for one price, but it, something's only as worth as much as someone's willing to buy for it. You know what I mean? Like, it's a market. The, the sell exactly. part, yeah, it's the market, right. Yeah. And, and what sells is the story. And this is very, uh, very interesting about 20th and 21st century art. Uh, the history, the, uh, the experience, the, what you feel about those things. The story is what sells today. Uh, well, and, it's interesting. Uh, art is, because nowadays it's like with social media and everything, it's the social hype around it. Like how much press does this get? Like Elon Musk is, I, I mean, I I'd argue know. he could be an artist in one some way, but from a traditional standpoint, I wouldn't call him an artist, but he's making NFTs and probably going to sell it for hundreds of thousands of dollars where there's people who've like literally gone to art school, spent hundreds I mean, of thousands of dollars to going to art school to become an artist and they're not able to sell artwork Dude, for that cost. Every second for a Super Bowl commercial is like a million dollars. And because they know marketing mm -hmm. and the power of marketing and, and hype or whatever is really like that collective mindset is really what like puts it out there. That new, like put new in the title and boom, like people's just minds are already like rolling for that. You know what I mean? Like it's so, yeah, a lot of words and, the publicity of something is is a big portion of, of a lot mm -hmm. too. But but those those are outliers. Remember that for every for what for, uh, the, the equivalent in the article is like oh the, if potentially for Da Vinci sold for four hundred fifty million dollars. But there's a ton of other artists and works that you never hear about. This is right. these are just exceptions. So don't don't generalize based on exceptions. Just because true. something does sell a tweet sells for four hundred hundred million dollars, like it means nothing.
it's it's right. not uh the, it, it's not what most yeah some some good things that are happening for example an, an old friend of mine Dmitry Cherniak has been making digital art for years he made a series called ringers and that just took off with the nft craze and it's awesome because he's been right. making these things for the almost nothing like i own actually zero of them but i own like some of the paperwork that he's been doing before and i love them mm -hmm. But suddenly his market tech took off and he's selling them for tons of money and he's, he's what, probably what were doing they this full time I'm now. sorry. What was his name and what were they called? Uh, Dmitry Cherniak, Google Ringers. Google Ringers, okay, cool. Ringers, it's, yeah, a, it's a series of generative works. He's been coding them mm -hmm. quietly and everybody would, would laugh saying like, oh, what is this? Like this, I don't care. No. You're, you're making mm -hmm. something that uh, doesn't matter. And now everybody wants one. And who, they sell for a, like 20, uh, 30 ETH and whatnot. A 3D printer. Who has a, does, does anyone talk about like 3D printers? 3D, uh, 3D printers. 3D yeah, printing but let me. Wait, do you, <laughs> all you guys know each other? Are you guys like from the class or something? <laughs> this is a panel yeah, discussion. I have a story and, about, and, about <laughs> <laughs> I have a story about Bree, the guy who started uh, MakerBot. Uh, I, was, I used oh, yeah. to live in Seattle and we sat in his, uh, in his studio apartment and he he was like man i don't know how i'm gonna pay rent at the end of the month but the future is 3d printers and uh he was like i'm gonna make one and then eventually he made make a bot and you know all the success that came with that so uh the people the, the success is not overnight uh, most of these yeah, people have right. been every, everyone yeah, is right. doing it for a long time and it's mm -hmm. hard even this this gallery that we're in right now, Beeple was obscure for, you know, over a decade. And then all of a sudden, this big wave caught up with them. And here, here we go. Well, yeah, how many, pain, how many pieces up, did you make? I don't see the work thousands, underneath right? it. Uh, the thousands, like over 20 years, five, 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 every five, day five, since. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's what made thousands and thousands of artworks. Yeah. I mean, 13 years. So, what? 13, yeah, 13 <laughs> years <laughs> straight. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone, someone uh, said that uh, artists make art because they they can't otherwise. That's just they have to. And I think even in people's case, whether you're a fan or not, that's exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he just mm -hmm. did it because he had to. And I'm well, glad I, that he had this kind of success. When mm -hmm. I when I met him, he was talking about how um, it was always just a goal to improve his craft along the way like he wanted because i mean as cg got better um and the tools got better he had to get better mm -hmm. along the way so cinema 4d would add in all these new rendering engines and all these new um techniques and tools into their software and he constantly wanted to have this drive to make the images that he had in his head but he never had the ability to do it so he constantly had this drive to get better and better at the software to create what he actually right. wanted then it's funny because once you do get to that certain point, then, you know, you get an asset or a library of things like you can like, you know, just draw in a painting or something and you're spending like all this time on this one flower, this one detail of this little part of the painting and then realize like there could have been an easier route to go about it or you're losing sight of the bigger picture and just being able to dish out those ideas or what you have and just get an outline of it like is have like the half the battle in itself and anything you know what i mean like just being able to put your ideas out there and and not be too attached or not be you know uh, i just like to let everyone know that we're kind of at the like 10 minute uh mark for wrapping up so if you, wait, if wait, you guys want to like finish uh <laughs> this is a panel discussion <laughs> and i guess you're the unofficial fourth panelist um, yeah. oh, these oh, are, man, I'm so sorry. This what is a hell? CTO <laughs> panel discussion. I'm enjoying the conversation. So uh, I don't know if you guys want to like keep on chatting or just like open it up to the whole group, or we can kind of uh, do whatever. But no. we're we're about so the last like ten minutes in, uh, of things. And Justin, yeah. you guys were on the panel. Yes. Yeah, Justin's oh. a CTO of ArtGate, uh, DV's former oh. CTO of Artsy, uh, Joel is a CTO oh, of uh, a handful of different companies, so we came to uh, oh, wow. <laughs> hear them. Wow, question there, Olga? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I did actually. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this. Do you guys think that this NFT, the current market, could be able to exist without blockchain if blockchain is compromised? 
um, would this sort of exist in like a new sort of like facet or something like that? Would this be able to continue? Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, um, I don't. Cause I think like, it would continue on a different blockchain, but without blockchain yeah. at all, it just because would be on a different chain. But it has it like a ledger. inherent flaw. Yeah. Because right now everybody's using computers. We're stringing them together, and we create supercomputers. But once quantum computers come in, those are centralized to like governments, institutions, yeah. and organizations. So like a place like Google, for example, can take their Hello. single Maybe. computer and target it towards like processing, guessing oh, like the, the next algorithm to add blocks, and that would completely centralize the system, which would Everything's possible, but I, I'm not, uh, yeah. I think, uh, I, know that, uh, I don't know, Joe, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I think in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, you know, the, what we call things will certainly change. Is it going to be NFTs in 10 years? I, I don't think, I think we'll just change the name but the actual end approach of you know getting people paid for the work that they make um, oh yeah i can see uh, it's not yeah, going to yeah, change yeah, and, yeah there's different ways and there's a yeah. lot of improvement that needs to happen like i think justin was asking well what are some of the negatives you know the original blockchain you know, just for fun the other day i'm like yeah, well what is exactly the original sort of blockchain paper you know envision with you know how the algorithm was yeah, going to work. Yeah. It, it had lots of flaws in it, including this idea that we're going to just burn a bunch of energy calculating a number of uh, you know, crypto, cryptographic yeah, you know, solutions. The, the actual math problem was like randomly go through all the numbers until you get like a certain number of zeros as the output. So it's essentially a, a junk calculation that's not necessarily you know, uh, doing really useful work. And that was that's a flaw that other people, as I understand, have uh, uh, improved on. You know, we someone mentioned helium and you know ways to sort of like, well, if we're gonna do work, let's do useful yeah. work. Uh, so I think the way that we get people paid for these uh, okay, so I'm going to go to B3 and then to come back to the call 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 and uh, I think the really exciting bit is what is this okay, going to become yeah. for the common person? Yeah. For someone like me, if Thank I you make sense in VR, right, or whatever digital work, how am I going to actually transact? And it doesn't need to be anything fancy that's hard to understand. You know, we have existing ways to pay people. So I, I think the future is, you know, going to more be a mixture of traditional methods with you know, the new things that we're learning on the frontier, whether it's NFTs or not. So I'd, I'd say, you know, don't work. Get artists that, artists come up to me and they sort of like worry about falling behind. In some ways, just keep doing what you're doing. Most important thing is keep creating and keep a asking the question of how do I get this to as many people as possible in a fair way that I can keep doing the thing I love doing. Um, as long as I keep asking that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to a better place. Mm -hmm. I do want to add, check out the platforms. Uh, there's some interesting things and not so great things happening. Like Nifty Gateway does an auction for pack at Sotheby's. And I think 99% of the people uh, are transacting on the platform without ever creating a wallet, without ever doing, like it is really bound to that platform for the most part. I think that entire the entire event would not exist without Nifty Gateway. And uh, it's it's a little bit um, it's worrisome because uh, this is very traditional stuff, right? It it gets sold on a on on one website and lives on that website and only exists on that website really. Uh, even though it exists elsewhere, I think it would be hard to move the market of packs right now out of Nifty Gateway. Mm. So you're saying you would be found in Nifty Gateway. That's what you're saying. I, I think we need platforms that are more open, open source, and yeah. are truly compatible and uh, are created where the best user experience wins, but where the objects are um, 
not bound to the platform. So if I mint on and sell on OpenSea today, yes, in theory, I can go to Rarible and, and sell it, paying like gas fees twice and things like that. These are pretty big barriers to movement. Mm. Uh, I think we need something that is a lot more portable, where these apps are truly client side and don't have are not attached to an existing experience. Right. So we probably need a, a we need something like email. And then well, if, you, if you look at email, like Gmail has the majority of email today. So it, it, it's, it's, I think it's inevitable, but we should have something more like email uh, and less like uh, uh, like Facebook. And that, that's it's kind of interesting because I, I, when a couple of years ago when VR was starting to like be a thing, the first Oculus that came out, they said like the one thing that's going to really drive VR is that email app. And it's something that um, where it was like, I got an email, the guy was talking about how he got an email because his kid's soccer coach said, I'm going to email the schedule out. So everybody had on the team had to get email. And uh, I think, yeah, exactly. Like that concept of having email being a thing and being open and accessible to everyone is like what makes these technologies grow and become an actual mainstream product. Yeah, I think accessibility, I mean, let's say if, if any of you have I watched some videos, I'm like, well, how hard is it to mint my own NFT? So I went down a little bit down that rabbit hole. And I can tell you it's not like, you know, it's not like a 30 second thing. If you don't have any technical experience, there's some friction, you know, in, in the way. And so I think regardless of any of the other problems as designers, I think it's, it's a human problem that's more about how do we make, you know, the overall action I'm trying to do easier. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of useless until normal people can sit down and, you know, just as easy as we send emails right now. It wasn't like that in the beginning. It was, you know, quite sophisticated to even just to send a message. Um, Code your network connection and connect all your... No, it's, yeah. Uh, it just yeah, experiences were not normalized. Right? Yeah. I, I yeah, worked so on uh, Microsoft NetDocs. In, in 1999, it uh, was supposed to be a successor of Office, and uh, it was a web-based email. Like Basically, Microsoft had a working Gmail-like application by 2001, and I was working on the server side of that. And we never shipped, because you know, Microsoft decided that the desktop was king, and that was the future. But there was a, we tried to, it's, it's, it was very similar to what Gmail is today. We had a user experience test, and uh, asked like 100 people to send an email, and I think out of 100, only three were able to actually send an email. People just didn't know how to do this. They were like, what am I doing? Where do I start? Try go mint an NFT today. Like, wallet what? What am I doing? Why is this like this? Why do I have to buy on one, transfer to another? What are these gas fees? It makes no sense at all. Uh, it will become common vocabulary eventually. And then everybody will know how to do it. But we're, we're just in the beginning of that. At the same time, that part of life is exciting. People who are doing it now are ahead of the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so early. I mean, it's not, the, the wave hasn't even started or even been uh, an idea yet. There's like no wave at all. Um, but yeah, everyone who is there will definitely be have the experience, but I, who knows, like, things could change drastically in any second. It's, it's weird to think about what we have now as early, because it feels so mainstream, but it's not. It's, ve it's still extremely early in all of it. All the digital, NFT, blockchain, coins, all of this is just barely started. And uh, it's not too late. It's actually quite early to get on the bandwagon and but but don't just like go buy a bunch of coins try to go make something experiment i i tried i started like two weeks ago i'm like now nft expert or something uh and uh but i've tried like three or four platforms uh learned a ton i'm writing a bunch of code to track like some uh some things on the blockchain it's completely non-trivial and uh having fun with it and having fun minting some minimalist Russian art as well. 
Uh, so uh, I, I, it's it, it's it's something. It's a world that can suck you in. You can try to make something and learn something in the way. It's awesome. It's very very early. It's it's very hard as well. I would just like to uh, interject real quick. Um, we're at the six o'clock mark, so that was the one hour window for the panel. Um, and so if we all want to do a quick round of applause, um, and then we can keep on chatting if everyone wants to keep hanging or, or wave. But thank you so much for all three of you coming together. Today. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna also gonna head out to the main lobby just to do the closing remarks for the fair. Uh, so if anybody wants to join, in I think point today just to, for one last little celebration to wrap up the fair. Get those. Thanks, Brendan. I read an article this morning that it was because the power in China went out that it's a huge Bitcoin drop. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're. That's scary. How much is relies on like one spot? Like sixty-two percent of it is in China. It's owned by China. Yeah. That's, uh, that's scary. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. And, uh, like one, one, Thanks everyone. Two, I'm gonna go one one keep my kids. Make, yeah. Right. Yeah, I just tagged my kids. I'm not. Take care. Good luck, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was really great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Great discussion, guys. Let's get out. Let's go in the lobby. I can't wait for the last lobby party. Yeah. One last lobby party. All right. Party lobby. And this, yes. uh, we are going to lobby, right? I mean, for the closing remarks. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's taking place in the lobby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish I could have time, but I was uh, studying. Yeah, and Justin as well. How are you feeling? Yeah. I feel like they could have kept chatting. I read all the hours. <laughs> Oh man, when I yeah. like, when I like, so much like that, you get to so. for him forever. Nah, no. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> I started doing my taxes this morning, and that was enough. Uh -huh. yeah. Not even math, yeah. numbers, but. <laughs> I can't believe that it's over. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the usual <laughs> amount of math I was doing. Yeah. But now I'm like, <laughs> I need to, you know, get <laughs> do algebra and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, what's this for? Yeah. Yeah. What test is it? It's like the test match. It's like the the French math. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really does. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That should be final. <laughs> um, I I guess this is the closing remarks for uh, Arcade International 2021. Uh, so for everyone that's come out, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, you know, none of this would be possible without all of you. So thank you all for making this such a an incredible moment. Um, we have a, a nice special announcement that I just wanted to share with the group that is here. And uh, please feel free to tell everyone else um, that's uh, been a part of Arcade International or anybody that's new and participating, let them know. Um, but in about six months from now, uh, we're going to be hosting uh, another major international community event. Um, just the, the working title right now is the Meta Biennale. Um, it might change by the time the event rolls around. Um, but uh, we're going to be hosting uh, a biennial in uh, Arcade International. Uh, so hey. it will be uh, mid-November um, is likely the time that it's going to take place. Um, well, as we have more information, we'll let everybody know in the community. Um, but this will be a, a very historic event. Um, it will be the first of many biennials that are going to take place in this platform. Uh, so if you can all mark it down in your calendar, um, let everybody else know that in mid-November, we're all going to be coming together as a group again for the first international art biennale in Artgate VR. Um, it's going to be an amazing time. So 
Um, I'm looking forward to that next moment with all of you. Um, this one was absolutely incredible. Um, it, it exceeded my expectations on just how many people came out and, and were a part of this. Um, and all the credit, you know, goes to Candice and, and the big team that we have behind the scenes um, to, to let everybody know. So um, if we could all just do a round of applause for Candice. Um, she's done an incredible job. Um, bringing yeah, this whole team all together. So, well done, Candace. Amazing work. Amazing work. Amazing, um, and that also um, goes to everyone else that's um, behind the scenes as well. Um, let's do a, a round of applause um, for the whole team on, on the marketing and the events um, side of things. Um, there's a few of you in the audience right now. So, thank you so much, everybody that's um, been a part of this. Well done. And uh, I'd also like to do a huge acknowledgement to, to Justin and, you know, he is an absolute wizard um, building out this technology. Um, he's brought together an incredible team of other developers to help make this all happen. Um, so uh, undoubtedly, none of this would be possible without uh, the amazing work that he's doing um, to, you know, make this technology work. Um, <laughs> I was so amazed to see all these people that come out and it didn't crash. It didn't crash. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's do a really warm uh, round of applause for Justin and the whole technology team. Well done, Justin. Amazing well done. Work. You're my Amazing hero. Work. You should be very proud. Um, and then also uh, one one last really uh, um, big round of applause for everybody that came out because this was not possible without any of you. So. Just to uh, each and every one of you, uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, <laughs> it's been amazing. Um, so, uh, if uh, on this last like little bit, Justin, would you like to say anything to the group um, since yeah, we're here for um, the, the tail end of things? I just want you all to give uh, Brendan a round of applause for keeping driving the ship. Like you're. We've been through some ups and downs this whole time, and he's always had his head on his shoulders with a positive outlook on things, and he's kept this thing alive and kept this going. Um, it's, I mean, it's new technology. It's not, hasn't caught on. It's not huge. Like, this is a small amount, but it's still way more than we had last year, and it's your persistence and your vision that's keeping us going forward, and uh, I think it deserves a huge round of applause for everyone. Because we really appreciate what you do. Yeah. Thank you, Brendan. Um, and and Candice. Uh, <laughs> that too. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure out how to deal with these things soon. <laughs> and. <laughs> Candice, um, would you like to say uh, a couple words um, or if there's anything you'd like to share to the group um, just as we're wrapping things up? Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say thank you to the people who work with us on mm -hmm. that. I'm thinking about uh, Danish and Saniel, uh, our volunteers, but also Alex and Miriam. Um, I mm -hmm. think that um, mm -hmm. and the tech team goes uh, behind Justin. Uh, Brenda Miriam, is so positive, Miriam. Justin <laughs> did about so many things. The technology is amazing and keeps improving. Um, I can see the progress compared to last year. Uh, the, the, and the people who attend this event are different. Uh, we see more and more interest. And uh, I, I really see a future for Outgate. So I'm really looking forward to see it like, growing, getting better, getting stronger. And... Um, <clears throat> Just congratulations because 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 it's an, it's an amazing app. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And just one request from everybody here: tell a friend. That's like all we need. Yes. Just one friend, maybe a hundred friends if you can, but just at least one. Tell a friend about your experience here, and uh, yeah, if we can have more than we had this time, then <laughs> that's awesome. Like we're just gonna and keep building this out. Eventually, we'll run out of space in this room, and eventually, we'll crash the app. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for signing up, crash. can we get can we get uh, Dinesh and Sunil, uh, Alex and Miriam, please come on up, uh, just so everyone can kind of see um, who's all behind the scenes to make this uh, happen. You know, this 
this doesn't happen by accident. It takes a really, really dedicated, passionate team. Uh, so these are all the, the faces behind the scenes uh, that are helping making this happen. That's exactly what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can see their faces. <laughs> um, so on behalf of the, the whole ArtGate team um, and everybody that made ArtGate International happen, thank you all. And this concludes our second annual International Art Fair in Virtual Reality. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, sleep. <laughs> Take a vacation, would you? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's about time. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> we made it through. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. We did it. <laughs> Sunil, <Awesome. laughs> big high five. <laughs> Is your, you, <laughs> I think you have the record for longest person in VR. Is it like three days straight? <laughs> Like every time yeah. I come in, you're in your VR headset. I even like rotate into the into the laptop. She's not yeah. a real person. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nice meeting you. I, I exposed you. Hello, we'll Sue. Now we know. Thank you so much for all your Thanks. help. Hello, Sue. Oh, Hello, Sue. Hello, Sue. Yes, Hello, yes, I love that. Such a star. <laughs> and Dinesh for live streaming everything. You've done incredible. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. How was the drive? How was it? Uh, that was okay. Uh, we saw no policemen and nobody stopped us. And we are now enjoying Montreal a lot. And it's amazing. No. It's Tiffany. Hey Tiffany, how are you doing? Over here. So I'm ending the live for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Catch up. Bye bye. Until the next time.